Hey everybody, um, Story of Avis by Elizabeth Phillips, written in 1877. Um, if you decide to delve into this book, be prepared for a lot of, I would say, poetic prose. I don't even know if that's a term, but uh, Elizabeth Phelps, she's really good about developing her story through the use of, I guess I would call flowery language. Um, it's not something that I would say that is written in modern times. You know, we're told nowadays to write straightforward, simple prose, you know, get to the point in a concise manner. You know, there's no, there's not a lot of use for extra words. Um, I wouldn't say that's necessarily true with Elizabeth Phillips' book here. I mean, she does use a lot of words to say something, but it isn't extra words. Um, it's almost poetic at times. With that said, it's kind of complicated because it takes a lot of thought to understand where she's going through some of the paragraphs. Um, but it's a complex book, you know, so I'm not going to knock it. Um, I think it was done really well. I think this is a book worth reading. All right, this is just the one I picked up off of eBay for a few dollars. But anyway, um, the main character's name is Avis, and she's an artist, a painter by, you know, aspiration, and one day she goes into her father's study. She's probably about 15, 16 years old, and she declares to her father that, you know, she wants to become an artist. And, and this isn't a time where women, you know, they're trained and cultivated to do things like to sew and to cook and to um, um, really learn how to take care of the domestic side of life because that's their role in society is to take care of, of their would-be husbands, you know, once they get married. You know, they're supposed to fit in to a certain sphere within, our li within their lives and uh, just own it. And that's all they're really supposed to be. But she goes in and tells her dad that she wants to be an artist. And he's just floored. He's like, what? Why, why do you want to be an artist, you know? Why don't you want to cook and clean and sew like like other women? And, and she's like, I just see that more as just what a servant does. You know, and it really tells of Avis's personality in this book, you know, that she doesn't want to be just another person um, that's supposed to fit into a certain mold that that her community is telling her that she needs to fit into that her family wants her to be. You know, she wants to break out and be more in her life. Well, the story goes on, and her father goes ahead and sends her to, to Italy uh, to train with some artists overseas, and then she travels to France uh, to keep up with her education. I think she spends about two or three years overseas, you know, learning the arts, um, learning how to paint. And her master um, is quite happy with what she's got for her base talent. And uh, when she when she leaves, you know he's you know he's looking forward to find out what she's going to become. Is she going to get lost in the crowd, or is she going to find her own voice as a painter? So that's where Avis is at when she comes back to America. Um, but she catches the eye of a young man named Philip Ostrander, and he tries to woo her, you know, he wants to make her his wife, you know, and uh, at one point Avis flat out tells him, she goes, I am not going to marry you, you know, I do not want to be a wife, I want to be an artist. And in her mind, you really can't be both, you know, because if you're a wife, you're expected to do certain things, you're not supposed to have a job. And uh, she wants to have a career, she wants to... You know, as I said, aspire to be a painter and express herself, you know, that way. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic going, dynamic going on there. Um, what's strange to me is that she actually decides to marry the guy. Um, you know, she gets hit by the love train. And uh, for whatever reason, the book isn't totally clear. She just has a change of heart. 
and she marries the guy and uh, <laughs> it's almost like she dies inside because um, through the second half of the book she's she's happy that she's married and she has this family um, she has a social life but at the same time you know she has one eye if you will on the studio upstairs in the attic of all places where she wants to paint and I think over the course of these five years that this book takes place in where they're married um, she paints one painting and she calls it the Sphinx <laughs> I guess it's a painting of a Sphinx you know it, it's not real descriptive about what the painting actually is but we just know that it's called you know the Sphinx what, what's interesting is that you know if you look at the mythology the Sphinx asks this question of men who are trying to find you know glory and treasure and things of that nature I'm not exactly sure how the story goes but I know it's something to do with you know what goes on two legs in the morning no four on the what goes on four legs in the morning two in the afternoon and three in the evening and of course the answer is man because you crawl on all fours as a baby you walk on twos as an adult and then you have your cane you know in the twilight years of your life um, but I guess one could ask, you know, what question is the Sphinx asking of Avis, you know? You know, what person do you want to be? You know, do you want to go through life as a wife? As a homemaker? Or do you want to go through life as possibly achieving all that you can be? <laughs> Sorry, I'm stealing that from the army. Um, you know, one of the commentaries in the back alluded to that, that the the, the picture of the Sphinx had a deep meaning in this book. So I wanted to throw that in there because I thought that was interesting. I don't know how true that is, but it's something worth thinking about when you read the book. Um, so on one level, you can look at this book and say, now here's a person that aspires to be creative, but yet they've really never achieved that. And there's various reasons why. Okay? So... You know, we can study the book from, you know, what holds a person back from success. But I think that what Elizabeth Phillips is, is getting at is breaking the mold of our social spheres that we put ourselves into or we let people put us into. Um, you know, certainly times have changed. And if you read the book, and I hope you really do, I mean, it's a great book that you will appreciate how far things have changed but also at the same time you'll look and say you know what can we do to continue to change for women you know so they are looked at as being 100 percent equal equal pay um you know they're not seen in just a certain certain light within society and that we're not telling our daughters that they can only be certain things because of you know you know how they were born, you know, as a, as a, as a girl. Um, there is allusions here to some feminist writers in this book. Um, there's lots of imagery regarding, um, like the bird Avis, you know, her name Avis means bird-like, um, you know, a caged bird, and eventually the, the bird gets set free. You know, I'm not going to tell you how the book ends, um, but I, I think this is worth reading. Um, I didn't fully understand how bound up women were within American history, you know, until I read this and this kind of opened my eyes up to that a little bit further. Um, and uh, as I said, I, I do believe that this is a book worth considering and thinking about. Um, one, if you're an artist, you'll like the book because it talks a lot about, you know, art things. <laughs> um, but uh, it also explores the human nature how we want to achieve more in our lives, and how we all have obstacles to overcome. You know, even in modern day era, you know, we have our own obstacles we need to try and overcome. That society perhaps is trying to mold us into, or, or perhaps within our own minds that we need to break out of. You know, and uh, and and know that we can be more than who we are. But uh, all right, guys. Again, the story of Avis, 
great book. Take your time reading it, um, and you will certainly enjoy it. Bye-bye.